Isn't it surprising when you've been beekeeping for a while how much crap you got laying around the place? I've got these old divider boards and they're getting a new lease of life. And you're getting to see what I'm giving a crap. So my plan is that this is going to be actually have some screen on here so is that the heat from the hive underneath can get into my split and I don't have to have as many bees to keep everybody warm, but yeah, what does it say around here? Might be good, might be shit, but hopefully it's gonna be good. So my idea is it's gonna be called, it's kind of when I was looking into this, it's sort of a double screen board. This is obviously not a, this is just a hole in a board, but still, it's the principle is that the warmth's gonna come up here from the, the hive underneath, because apparently, I didn't know this until I started researching it, but the, the queen scent has to get passed from the bees to the bees and they have to pass it all around. It doesn't just float around in the hive. So you can do a split, you can have some wart from underneath and the girls don't work, have to work as hard and they can raise a new queen, make a new home. Hell, it's a win-win. It's an interesting journey, this beehive. I tell you what, I always thought the scent of the queen floated around in the hive so the girls knew that they were had a queen and that I guess he would have been wearing some serious perfume, but hell, apparently it's not that at all. It's the attendants that are on the queen have to pass her scent around. And when they all run around the hive, they all know that she's there because all the other bees are passing the scent to each other. But then when they think they're queenless, then they think, shit, we better get a new queen. So my idea is I'm gonna have a screen either side of this so my little girls can't touch each other, but the warmth will be able to come up so they won't have to work as hard. And hell, hopefully, hopefully that will grow a new queen without having to take such a workforce away from the bottom box. Because the plan is that if you're gonna keep the warmth from underneath, you won't need to take as many workers from the hive that's actually collecting honey. And so you can make a split, you can keep your honey production happening, everybody wins, including you. So the go is that we're gonna actually, I've actually cheated and I've made me, made me square, made me opening. All we're gonna do is put a bit of mesh on here and so you can make this hole as big or as little as you like. It's just because I'm a scab ass and I've just had these bits of wood that I cut to the right size. Hell, if you really wanted to get excited, you could probably have a lot bigger hole, but this hole seems to work. So I've already done part of the project. We've just put a little bit of a gap here so as we can let the ladies have an entrance. So we just want to put a bit of mesh on our little hole. Where's my cutting up thing? You can use a pair of scissors. I found a little old sharp Stanley knife seems to work pretty good. Of course, if you're really motivated, you'd have this crap all measured and you wouldn't have to do it individually. You know what? You can't have everything. Just follow the principle. Don't get too blooming pedantic about it all. Oh, that'd be right. Now I just ran out of staples. Oh, God. Oh, no, I haven't run out of staples. I've run out of the staple gun being cooperative. Some of my earlier ones, I used some aluminium mesh that I had, but this is actually aluminium flywire. I've got some others that I've used just normal flywire, so I'm experimenting. I'm thinking aluminium flywire might be better than the plastic one, so as at least when we get to the washing point, we're not gonna melt the plastic flywire, but I have, haven't got that far yet of reusing them. So we will find out together, but at this time, we're gonna get to this point. One thing at a time. You just want to pull it a little bit tight. Don't stick the staple through your finger, it could possibly help it. And there you have it. So the ladies won't be able to reach each other through that mesh. Whew, what do you reckon? I don't know, I think it's gonna be a great idea, but there's some people that are naysayers. Oh, well, I'm not much good at that. Well, of course, beekeeping is all about adapting because this season has been a real hectic mess with the jolly postage gone haywire. I think all the online shopping's gone absolutely crazy. So Australia Post is just deluged with transport. So instead of the bees taking three days to get here, they're taking a week. And so some of the ladies are a little bit weaker than they should have been when they got put in the hives. So I lost a few queens in this, this little bit, but I come up with an ingenious idea. I've been through them and I've given the splits that lost their queen. I've given them a bit of brood from the queens that were laying next door. So. Let's have a look and see whether they've decided to raise a queen cell for us. This is my very high tech way of telling which hive I've got to look in, my little, little stick. I've got bits of stick, bits of wood stuck in my little straps. The idea is to know which one didn't accept their queen. So being that these girls didn't, the queen didn't survive that I gave them, 
I thought, well, I'll, instead of actually letting it go to waste, I've gone to all the trouble of having a split. I'll get some of the brood frames from the queens that did survive and pop in here and hopefully they'll raise a queen and then the bloodline that I wanted will continue on. But it's a long way between a queen cell and an active hive, of course, because once she gets hatched, then she has to get out, she has to get laid and then she has to get back. It's a bit of a hectic deal. But anyway, we're in with a chance. Hopefully we'll, we've got a queen cell. <laughs> we'll start out here somewhere, find a frame that we can get rid of. They're not pleased to see us, which usually means they haven't got a queen because they're, they're usually a bit towy when they haven't got a queen. Although these girls can be a bit towy regardless. <laughs> That's why they're getting requeened. Let's see whether we can find the frame I put in here. That's the honey frame. Here we go, this is the one we popped in. If you're doing this, you be really careful when you pull your frame out. What have we got here? Oh, there we go. They're raising a few cells over this side. Right, so we'll pop that back there. Now I'll put that above our little vent hole so she's going to be nice and warm. We'll just shuffle all the frames back together. Put our other honey frame back in. Now this particular one, I don't want to actually take off the top of the box yet because I want them to stay nice and warm for a little bit longer. So we'll just put them back together and tell them it's okay. Just, just calm down, everybody. <laughs> You're all right. You'll be all right though. You're in with a chance. Cool. Now, don't forget my stick so I know where I'm up to. We'll just have a peekaboo in here and see what we can find. So this one, the queen was accepted because it hasn't got a stick on the lid. So we'll just make sure that she's still laying up nice. And then we're gonna take our divider board away and we're gonna turn it into its own hive. Hopefully. That's the plan anyway. What do you reckon, Chicky Babes? What are you doing? It's about time for you to get away. Get the mood from this citrus block. Let's pop that over there, out the way. And we'll just shuffle a few across to see. Oh, there's a bit of something happening. There we go, we'll pick this one up. Have a look at what that's going. There we are, she's laying away, which is good. Now you don't really need to find the queen. It's handy if you can, because you can see what condition she's in, but as long as you can see that she's actually laying up and she's doing a nice job, I think you're all good to go. Oh, that looks a bit better. That's a nice pattern. He's gone somewhere a bit fresh. Nice lot of young babies in there. Built that up. That's looking good. I reckon she's good. Pop that back in there. I reckon this one's all right to turn into its own hive by now. Because we ought to do it very soon because we're about to move all these girls. And this could get complicated as one big pile. So I've got myself some bases and some lids that we're going to go and get. And I'm going to take the this box off of here because I've got the divider board that I showed you at the start of this in the middle and we're going to turn this into its own hive now which is whew, it's all part of the process we're going to put our brood box on top of our new blooming base and then we're going to put it back where it belongs so as the field bees come back home here and they know where they live and then when we move them, we'll separate it all out. So we'll just put the box on the lid. Now, with your divider board, when you peel it off of your other hive, just make sure you shake all of these bees into the box you're taking over here, because it's unlikely, but you could be unlucky and have the queen sitting on the base here, so. And that would really defeat the purpose of the exercise. So now we're gonna put our hive mat and our lid back on the hive that we split. And then we're going to put our new base on top. And then we'll put our new beehive uh, back on top. And then our lid on top of that. Ah, shit, don't lose anybody. I found this crazy size isolation works pretty good. They nibble on it a little bit, so it's not, it doesn't last a real long time, but it's not too bad for insulation purposes. Right, and we'll do that. And we'll just strap it all together. And then when we go to move them all, We'll create a whole new thing when we place them in a new position. And then everybody will reorientate to where they live. And we'll have a new hive. <sighs> if you weren't careful, you'll get fit doing this career. <laughs> yeah. Oh, no. Man. Yeah, what do they do with their mats? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Yeah. 
this whole process is going to go on for a fair bit longer yet, but this you get the principle. That's my screen divider board so we can get some heat up. And as you can see, the girls can raise a queen cell with this actual divider, so the scent has to be passed from B to B. If they can't touch each other, they think they're separate. Hell, you get the heat, you get the queens. Life's good here in the bee yard.